Okay. Uh, one second. All right, everybody, we are live. Um, this is Dinah Stamir, Search for Huru, the Cafe Time Don. Uh, we are shooting, we're filming, shooting another series of living and doing business in Africa. We are back in Kenya. This is the Kenyan edition part two. I have my brother Kevin Kukimani. Um, yes. Who's in Kenya, and you know we're gonna dialogue, ask questions about how life in Kenya really is, uh, what business opportunities are in Kenya, because I know a lot of you are interested in relocating to Africa. I know there are many in the diaspora who are ready to relocate back to Africa, but don't have need a real perspective in the facts on living and doing business in Africa. So. Um, Brother Kevin is, is in Kenya, and we're just gonna uh, dialogue and 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 chop it up. And you know, Kevin's gonna share with us, you know, how life is in Kenya. I know Kevin, you said you've been to a, a lot of African countries, so you know, you go into detail as far as where all you've been, uh, what to expect, and then people who are interested in starting a business or who are concerned that hey, if I move to Africa. To a country, what can I do for a living? You know, maybe you could answer some questions, consult, or help them out with that. So, um, okay, that's what we're doing today. But Kevin, go ahead and uh, go go into your background. I know you're currently in uh, Kenya, and I know you wanted to share what other countries you've uh, been to in Africa. Okay, um, basically, I've been to to uh, I'm in Nairobi right now, Nairobi, Kenya. That is where I was born and raised. Um, so I've been to, to a lot of countries. I've been to all East African countries except Uganda. Mm -hmm. I've been to, to South Africa. I've been to, to uh, West Africa. I've been to, to Ghana. I've been to Nigeria. I've been to Cote d'Ivoire. I've been to um, Gambia. I've been to Senegal. Uh, visited these places. Uh, we have a lot of differences, but we are similar in uh, circumstances and problems. Mm -hmm. So the obvious thing is we should be also similar in solutions. And um, yeah, let me speak for my country first, uh, where I was born. Doing business in Kenya. Uh, Kenya at the moment is doing well. I can say for... Um, an African country, it has achieved 7% uh, growth for the last about six years, which is quite impressive for, for uh, a developing country. Mm -hmm. uh, mostly the best thing to invest in in Kenya, the number one thing to invest in Kenya would be real estate. Wow. Uh, real estate is booming. Uh, there's a lot of business. Uh, residential homes, commercial homes, and I was actually talking to my friend yesterday and we said Nairobi doesn't have uh, a theme park. So usually what people spend their money on here is partying and uh, drinking. Right. There's quite a huge uh, middle class in Nairobi. Now, you mentioned something, a theme park. Now, the only place that I think really in Africa or Sub-Saharan Africa where there is a theme park, maybe Nigeria and I know South Africa. You, 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 just, you just touched on something. So there are any uh, developers or in, in, in the diaspora who know how to build a theme park, a theme park would be a great idea uh, to build in a place like um, in Nairobi, Africa. yeah, yeah, or, or pretty much anywhere, and then also too, um, I would say movie theaters. Do you guys get a lot of the movies that come from the West? We do, we do. Nairobi actually is Nairobi is Westernized. That is what I can say. We consume a lot of American movies and music and. 
even we add some of the lingo to to our daily uh language you know i use swahili and we use a lot of american words slang words mm -hmm. so kenya is pretty much very uh westernized uh what movie will be released in the states will probably be having a premiere also here the many movie theaters in uh nairobi many so many okay i didn't i didn't i didn't know that uh well i really don't yeah. go to the movies no it has uh like six or seven outlets here okay yeah okay. and then with, with nairobi or kenya being westernized pretty much anything that you can get in the west you can also get in nairobi is that is that true yes you can get pretty much everything that you can get in the west in nairobi maybe at a slightly higher rate mm -hmm. uh, but uh, the same uh, subway you'll eat subway sandwich is the same uh the fried chicken you'll get it's basically the same thing uh, yeah you know i was uh, i was in nairobi three was it two or three years ago was the last time i was in nairobi so uh, very westernized, very clean city. Um, I was impressed with the infrastructure as far as the roads. Uh, you know, I, I would say that roads were better than a lot of places here in America. So I was impressed with that. Now you said traveling around Africa, different places, but same problems. What, what are some of these problems that you see that you've identified traveling throughout Africa? Okay, you know, uh, basically one thing is lacking in Africa and that is uh, government uh, doesn't have the capability to keep up with development. Mm -hmm. Like you find like in, I'll give an example of Ghana, Nigeria, Kenya, you know, you have a lot of investors who want to invest maybe in real estate to go and buy a piece of land. Uh, in the Western world, it would be up to the government to provide solutions for like uh, piped water and uh, sewage connection. So in Nairobi and, and Africa in general, it usually comes last. So you find a lot of, uh, when you do investments in real estate, you have to factor in a solution for providing water for your clients, uh, sewage facilities, sewage treatment facilities okay and uh so you have to do solar provision because in some african countries electricity is erratic uh, nigeria case in point so you have you have quite a lot of challenges but the money you make from real estate in kenya i can say is better than what you can make in america um in fact uh, at some point nairobi overtook uh, miami as uh, the number one investment for real estate people were like no how dare you compare nairobi and miami but it's true nairobi did overtake miami in uh, property index and uh, surprisingly number two was mombasa kenya yes mombasa that's another place i've never been but it's beautiful from what i understand yeah, the new railway connecting Nairobi and Mombasa. Mm -hmm. You said railway? Yes, there's a new railway, uh, standard gauge railway. Oh, when, when did this um, open? It was launched about two months ago. Wow. So, so you, do you catch the train in Nairobi? Like, where did you catch the train at? Yeah, in Nairobi, and then you will be in Mombasa in four hours. Wow, I didn't, I didn't know that. Now, is this a project that was built by the Chinese, or who? who uh, yeah. Of course, of course. Um, yeah. The Chinese, how they're doing business in Africa, it's it's a skewed model, but it's a win-win. That is what I can say. Okay. So the railway, the old railway from in Nairobi was built in 1890 mm -hmm. by the British uh, using Indian laborers. So. Okay. Uh, it has lasted for more than a decade, you know, more than a century, hundred years more. So, 
a railway is a huge investment and uh standard gauge railway so far from Mombasa to Nairobi has costed us 3.4 billion dollars and uh it should go to to Kigali in Rwanda it is passing through three countries Kenya Uganda and Rwanda wow wow so it is quite a huge uh project and there's another project uh it's called the Lapset which is building a new port in Lamu Okay. And and uh, going to Ethiopia and South Sudan. Wow! Wow! Now the use quite heavy uh, infrastructural developments in Kenya. Okay. Let me ask you this: Do you think that the Chinese? Because you said it's a win-win. These infrastructure pro projects are a win-win for the Kenyan people, and of course, the Chinese are gaining something from it as well, as far as revenue by building it so yeah do you see do you think the chinese are exploiting uh kenyans by any type of way or do you think it's a fair trade what they're doing uh, as far as these infra infrastructure projects you know uh, amir one thing you should know is countries don't have uh friends they have interests mm -hmm. uh, uh, the Chinese have their interests, right? And uh, by them getting their interests and uh, us getting the railway, I'd say it's a win-win. But of course, it's skewed in the in the sense that it is Chinese funded, Chinese constructed, and Chinese maintained. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you see, they'll make the money quick. And, and and hand over the project so of course you'll need some chinese expertise still because they're the ones who built the railway so in a, in the sense you'll have to go back to them as the uh, contractor and tell them uh, come and train our guys and so they'll still be making money off of it okay so when <laughs> Exploiting, I wouldn't go as far as saying exploiting, I'd say it's heavily on their side. It's the, the scale is tilted towards their side. <laughs> but it's not exploiting. I'm not exploiting. So can Kenyans, because I know you guys have the Kenyan Silicon Valley. I know that yeah. Mark Zuckerberg was interested in doing a lot in Kenya. Uh, yeah. I know Jack Ma. The Chinese billionaire, he just yeah. left Kenya. Yeah. So are you telling me that Kenyans, there's not enough Kenyan ingenuity to build their own, for you guys to build your own railways, or, yeah, railways throughout Kenya to other African countries? Amir, the, the challenge is not uh, whether there are people who can do it. People can do it. It is the finances. Uh, for the government to get a loan of $3.4 billion just like that, it is only one country in the world that can do that, and that is China. So you're saying that, because, I mean, when we think Africa, we think the natural resources, we think the wealth that's already there, I mean, Kenya's were like number two or number three as far as exports for coffee, maybe, and tea? Uh, tea. We are number three, tea. Tea, right. Um, and I forgot what else you guys are known for. Tourism is big. In Tourism. Kenya. is flowers. We are the number one uh, export of cut flowers in the world. Mm -hmm. So with all... Uh, number this, one uh, pyrethrum. Mm -hmm. So with all this, you're, you're still saying that Kenya wouldn't couldn't come up with 3.4 billion dollars of their own money for, for this it could it could but why would you want to squeeze yourself to raise such a capital when you can borrow and do a payment repayment plan for 100 years why would you want to squeeze yourself at once okay no that, that makes sense it's called using other people's money yeah. these infrastructure projects are Kenyans allowed, or are there Kenyans that are hired to participate in these projects? Majority of the people working there are Kenyans. Okay. 
But you're saying that Kenyans aren't allowed to maintain it, that the Chinese have to maintain the actual project. That is just for the railway. Just for the railway. Okay. Yeah, uh, for the roads, it is up to two Kenyans. Okay. Yeah. And the roads also, the design is done by Kenyans. Okay. And then, like, as far as these loans that Kenya is getting from China for these infrastructure projects, like, what are the terms? Do you know? Like, is there, like, a interest rate that's completely ballooned or... I mean, I, I think no, there's more to it. The repayment terms, the repayment terms are, are good. That is what I can say. Mm -hmm. uh, that is why you see a lot of African countries are rushing to, to China. <coughs> People are getting, uh, countries are getting loans from uh, the World Bank and the uh, IMF. And uh, people thought this were exploitative in sense that they'd give you money, but they'd want you to do something right. uh, in return. Like they'd say, uh, we'll give you money to build this road, but you have to allow, you know, maybe decriminalize homosexuality in your country. Right. Barack Obama was doing that. Yeah, yeah. That is what a lot of Western countries do. So, so how do you guys... How do Kenyans, ever since Barack Obama came to Kenya and told Huru Kenyatta for you guys to, I guess, decriminalize homosexuality, how do Kenyans feel about Barack Obama? Well, Barack Obama is still loved in Kenya. Uh -huh. uh, he, at the end of the day, he's not a Kenyan. He is the son of a Kenyan. Right. So he's speaking on an American point of view, not a Kenyan point of view. Okay. So we didn't keep that in heart and, and say, yo, Obama, we hate you for this. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. Now, the elections are coming. Oh, we talked about um, how tribes or how in Kenya is very tribal. I know you have the Luo and the Kikiyu who are very, yeah. um, as far as when it comes to politics, are very uh, influential. And, yeah. and, and then the Maasai aren't really influential when it comes to politics. Um, not really, not national politics. Yeah, so how does, as far as doing business in Kenya, mm -hmm. and I guess tribal factions get in the way as far as doing business somewhat? The funniest thing about Kenya, uh, Kenya becomes tribal uh, during election time. Okay. After elections, after everything has come down, uh, the general uh, goes down. People, people like accommodative of each other, and people intermarry. You know, it is normal. Okay. So it, it's there is nothing that will stop me from going from one place to another place. Because I'm from a different tribe, no. Okay. So do um so in Kenya, as far as the parties, you know, like here we have Democratic Party and Republican Party. Mm -hmm. So basically you'll have a party, but it'll be kind of like a front for the Luo people and the Luo interests. Then you have another mm -hmm. party, but it's kind of a front for Kikuyu interests. Is that, is that what you're saying? Some sort of way. Uh, at the moment, the 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 ruling party, that is Jubilee, has two major tribes, mm -hmm. and the uh, coalition is like a grouping of the rest of the tribes. Okay. So these two tribes uh, in, in the ruling party are the ones who've had leadership uh, from in, since independence. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is easy to join the opposition uh, side if you're from a, a smaller tribe or a smaller outfit. Okay. What... um. Let's see here. What so? What do you currently do right now in Kenya? Like, what's your uh, like, what's your background? 
Mm. Okay. So basically what I do, I do sewage treatment. I do on-site sewage treatment, uh, recycling, environmental layer services. Basically is turning sheet water into clean water. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that is what I do. That has made me travel to a lot of African countries. And so um, when I'm speaking about infrastructural governments being slow on infrastructural development in Africa, I, I know firsthand what I'm talking about. Okay. Now, do you, have, do you have your own company or do you work for a company? No, no, not yet. Not yet. Okay. But you, you plan on starting your own company? Um, definitely. Definitely. Now, a lot of startups. In a lot of startups. Well, I know Kenya is like the startup entrepreneur technology hub of, of Africa right now. It is. It is. Oh, another thing. If you want to invest in Kenya, the best thing after real estate is is uh, IT. Anything IT related, uh, you just struck gold. IT related. So I, I see a lot in India, and there are a lot of Indians in Kenya too. India yeah. pretty much controls the IT sector for the most part globally because they pretty much do everything out here in America too, or they contract. Yeah. Um, yeah. So are you saying that, is it, is it like that too in Kenya for the most part? No, well, in Kenya, like I said, there's a lot of startups there's a lot of uh people doing uh apps and you know that kind of stuff mm -hmm. but indians do control a significant part of uh it industry in kenya mm -hmm. they do because i think there's a couple of initiatives here in america for for black americans as far as coding and getting okay your IT certifications. Um, okay. Black people who code and, and get their IT certifications, a lot of time when they, I guess, leave and accept foreign jobs, they do contracting jobs in like Afghanistan and Iraq, which is aren't safe places. Are you saying they could also see Kenya as an opportunity to do IT work? It's true, yes, that is what I'm saying, 100%. Yeah. What um do, do you know like can you give us an idea of some of the wages um as far as income or salaries or because I know you know people aren't gonna get paid as much I, and I could be wrong. I would think that the salaries won't be as high in Kenya like they are in America. Do you do you have any facts on that or any ideas on that? Uh, the salary in Kenya is Definitely not as high as America. Mm -hmm. uh, standards of living here are way, way, way cheaper. Way cheaper. Mm -hmm. uh, in Kenya, uh, 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 a low-income family uh, can have um, house help, you know? Mm -hmm. So uh, standards of living definitely are way, 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 way cheaper. So a remuneration, you can, if it is for for uh fresh people fresh from college you're looking at a salary maybe of 400 to 500 dollars usually usd a month usd a month yeah and, and, and what in uh, me i like the city like i would live like near in nairobi um uh, what can form so for people who are interested in relocating to kenya or nairobi what can four hundred to five hundred dollars a month? What kind of lifestyle can you live? What can I? What can that get you? As a foreigner coming to live in Kenya with five hundred dollars, mm -hmm. say that's a bit too little. Okay. For foreigner. Why? Why do you say that? Well, because uh, this will get you a house in not a very upmarket neighborhood okay this will be in the probably low income uh, residential side okay yeah so 
basically as a foreigner the least amount of money you should be making you're looking at upwards of three thousand three thousand five hundred dollars a month it's about three thousand dollars a month yeah. okay and in kenya as far as jobs is that possible to find a job if you don't have if you're not an entrepreneur and you, you come to kenya looking for work is it possible like what kind of jobs can you do in kenya where you're making three thousand dollars a month I work with the UN. Okay. So work with the yeah, UN. Yeah, work with work with an NGO. Okay. Yeah. But for the most part, the NGOs they they try to employ Kenyans. Okay. Which is, Maybe employing Kenyans. Which 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 is fair. Um, which is fair. Yeah. And and I I know you spoke on real estate. Like if I wanted a a nice or a a, 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 a cool three bedroom two bath house mm -hmm. in Nairobi or maybe the suburbs, not too far, maybe I would say we'll say like fifteen twenty minute drive to downtown, no traffic. Okay, so this one you're looking at uh, neighborhoods within uh, Westlands, mm -hmm. uh, Kileleshwa, Lovington. Kilimani, these sort of places. Yeah. Westlands, like how much would a three bedroom, two bath house to buy? How much would that cost kind of roughly in Westlands, a place like the Westlands? About $800. A month? Yeah. What, what about to buy, if you wanted to buy one? To buy, to buy would cost you, it would cost you like, uh, about you could even buy for an apartment for like half a million dollars half a million dollars. but if, if you want to buy like a proper uh, suburban house a picket fence you know the whole uh, backyard front yard thing you'll you'll cough up some money like how much roughly because i know people are wondering this area i mean like wetlands yeah Oh, that will cost you like about a million dollars. USD or ship teeny show? USD. Wow. Re real estate in, in Westlands is, is quite in uh, demand. And Westlands and Upper Hill, you have a lot of demand. Uh, they were showing Upper Hill for an acre is, it has reached now about $8 million for just an acre. Without nothing developed, nothing on it, just an acre. Mm -hmm. And then, like you said, real estate has gone up a lot. I know people in Nairobi area who bought houses like three years ago, and it's already doubled. It's already doubled the price, yeah. The demand for housing is, is huge, so the opportunities in real estate is huge. There's a huge middle class. There's a huge entrepreneurial class. So uh, it is quite exciting to be in Kenya. You gotta use the bathroom? You gotta use the bathroom? Go use the bathroom. I guess I'm right here. Did you? Okay, go use the bathroom. My son, my son just woke up. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm -hmm. Don't do that. Come on, I'm doing something. Stop it. Go use the bathroom. I'll, go, I'll get you situated. I see you. I know, I see you too. Yeah, my son just, just woke up, so. Uh, no, it's okay. Hey, hey, black critical thinkers, I appreciate it. Thank you, thank you. I mean, thank so you, thank you. you're saying the great opportunity for black people or the diaspora or Kenyans who want to relocate to Africa and make a living for themselves. And that's Kenya would be a very good start. Kenya would be a very good start. Uh -huh. But you're saying get into IT. IT is really, you know, uh, in Kenya, there is a fiber optic cable. Mm -hmm. And that has placed Kenya in. 21 i think it's the only country in africa that uh fastest speeds i, I have 30 30 mbps uh, 30 mbs in in my house at the moment so uh, well and, and that's what i was telling people people they always like when, when they speak of africa they speak of it as if you can't have the luxuries 
in Africa like you do in the West. And one of them is fast internet. And I tell them, you could buy anything in Africa that you could buy in the West as long as you have the money. Yeah. So let, so let me ask you, your internet, how much a month does it cost you, like roughly, your fast internet? It costs me about uh, $45. That's not bad. I mean, that's that's that, that's not bad at all. Because I mean, I'm looking at you now. The the connection's great. I mean, it's smooth. There's no interruptions. That's not bad at all. Yeah. Now, is 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 it, is it orange? Is that the is it orange or Airtel or what? Uh, which, who's your provider? It's called uh, Zuku. Zuku. Okay. Is that is that African owned or is that uh Asian owned? It is uh, Kenyan Asian owned. Okay, got you. Okay. All right. Let, let me ask you this. So, um, who Kenyatta uh, declared? I think is the, the, the I guess the Asian population, Indian border. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. uh, they're now considered an official tribe, I guess. Okay. Uh, how do you feel about that, and what were his motives behind that? What do you think? Uh, obviously, his motives were were political. Uh huh. It's an election uh, period, so he wanted uh, the Asian vote. Okay. And they're quite a significant number in Kenya. Oh, yeah. So, I mean, you already have uh, Kenyan citizenship. You're third, fourth generation. Whether, whether somebody says you're an extra tribe doesn't add anything to, to your life. So, obviously, it is just to appease uh, the Asian voters. Okay. Do you, do you think it's going to help him in his re-election bid? This this election is 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 funny because a lot of the old money that is what I can say. Old money guys, they're the on Kenyatta's side. Do me a favor. Talk if you could um just just keep because there's people in the chat room. Let me get my son to give me like a minute. Let me get my son situated real quick. But yeah, let me. No let me hold on, hold on one second. Let me see. Anybody have any questions for? Um, okay, here goes a question. Uh, are you familiar with Mobius Motors? Yeah, Mobius Motors. Yeah. Can you can you speak on Mobius Motors real quick and um, if they're hiring? Mobius Mobius Motors is 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 a Kenyan owned company, and then. Uh, I've seen quite a number of the vehicles on Kenyan roads. I, I don't think they've started yet exporting uh, the vehicles, but yeah, it is it is growing. I can I can you can notice it. You can see it on the road. All right, I'm coming back. My bad. Okay. I'm here. Sorry about that. Okay. What's the major bank in Kenya? Uh, you guys have, is, is, um, what, what are some of the, you guys have, um, was it African, um, is it UAN in Kenya? You, what's the major bank in Kenya? Uh, the major banks in Kenya, uh, the biggest, of course, is Kenya Commercial Bank. Uh huh. And uh, Barclays Bank. We got Barclays. Okay. What about is UAB in uh, Kenya? United African Bank is it UAB? UAB. Uh, I think that would be UBA. UBA is it UBA? United Bank of Africa. Are they are they out there? 
Yeah, but you know this uh in Kenya they are third tier banks. Uh meaning their banks doing better than them by far in in okay. in Kenya. Okay, but I know U UBA they're more popular I believe in uh West Africa. West Africa, yeah. Yeah, I, I see them. So most, of these, most of these banks even from uh from West Africa have not made a significant impact in the Kenyan market. Right. Yeah, it's kind of hard to penetrate uh, the Kenyan banking system. Like Barclays Bank celebrated uh, being in Kenya for over 100 years in 2010. So the, the new guys will have a hard time. Right, but Barclays is... Um... That's more of a, that's a European. They're, yeah, it's a European. It was used for the colonialism, during colonialism. Mm -hmm. uh, it was used by the settler communities, uh, Barclays and Standard Chartered. Now, as far as, uh, let me ask you this, as far as credit, you know, here in America, we have access, if you have a good credit score, you can pretty much get stuff, no money down, and the bank will finance it. How is okay. the credit system for uh, individuals in Kenya? In Kenya, a surprising thing is the credit system tends to favor the rich, the very rich, mm -hmm. and, and the very poor. Okay. So uh, you have the credit system based on, on your, your uh, loan payment or how much you put in your bank. In, in Kenya, we have how much airtime I use. Uh, I can get access to, to $300, $400 uh, loan. Okay. As, that is as a low-level consumer. But for the middle class, they're finding it a bit harder to finance their projects. Well, why, why is that, do you think? That's weird. You see, out here, the poor, it's harder for them to get loans. But like I said, as long as you have proof of income, and a good credit score, banks will give you money all day. Well, in Kenya, the the, the banks are still are still the king. Okay. The legislation doesn't doesn't stop them. You can pass all legislation laws and saying you have to give this guy's credit or what. No, the banks are still the king. Okay. Well, it's it's like that here in America too. I mean, you know, the bank the banks are king on uh, around the planet. So, yeah, yeah. you know that that's that's common. Um, now, as far as um, opportunities in science, as far as physics and chemistry, so okay. I guess what you do as far as uh, cleaning the water, there's a uh, chemistry involved in that, correct? It is biological. Biological. So yeah. So it is a bit of uh, engineering and. Uh, Mostly engineering and a bit biological. Yeah. So what role do you play in that process? I am the one who brings in the business. Oh, I'm so the one to go to consumers and explain to them, basically a sales engineer. Oh, so you do sales? Yeah. Okay, I do sales. So let, let's talk about sales. What, 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 what kind of sales opportunities, as far as sales jobs, are there in Kenya? Yeah. Well, uh, you know, Amir, uh, five years ago, I started my own company, uh, linking uh, middle-income companies from all over the world to, to Africa. Hmm. So I still have that company. Uh, so what happened is um, I decided to get employment first, so to get a better understanding of how to run business, a business. Right. Makes sense. Absolutely. Yeah, so um, the company that I joined was a startup company, but the guys, the directors had, the directors who are Kenyans, they had uh, quite some experience working for another similar company. Okay. Yeah, so uh, in terms of science, you can invest in environmental uh, technology all day in Africa. You, that is a money maker for you, definitely. Okay, and then, and, and then Kevin, going to what your your um, your business as far as leaking 
I guess, other companies to Africa? Like, what exactly do you do? I'd like to know more about that. What basically uh, uh, I would do is link middle, mid-sized companies, not large companies, mid-sized companies, the companies that cannot afford to have staff in Kenya, but they want business from Kenya. Mm -hmm. So I would get, if it is, if it is a, a road construction company or a technology that is used in road construction, I would get an engineer and my, my, my part would be to, to, convince, to convince clients in Kenya to, to go with this product. Okay. Yeah, so it is basically has to do with sales. Okay. And, and uh, it is a good model. Though uh, I experienced very, I had a very bad experience, so that's why I decided to to go into employment first to learn the ropes of uh, business. Okay, so basically, any international company who wants to penetrate or have a presence in the Kenyan market, you brought them in. Not not any international company, mid sized, uh, mid sized or small companies. And you said you had a bad experience. Can you so people can know what to oh, hold on. so people know what to uh, expect um, as far as like the ups and downs and some of the adversity that they might face um, in, uh, in in doing business in Africa. What 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 happened? What was your experience? Uh, well, I contacted this company from India. Okay. Um, it was a water bottling company. Okay. Uh, so they said they can, you know, do water bottling manufacturing of the equipment and uh, the pet blower, this kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. And I got for them a client, uh, convinced the client, sold their, their product. Mm -hmm. uh, turns out the company was going under. Oh, they went under with my clients about hundreds. So that was a very bad experience for me. Yeah, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about that. Yeah, it's um. So there's a lot of fraud, of course. There's yeah. a lot of fraud right. when you're dealing with international companies. There's a lot of fraud. So let me ask you this: How are you able? Because in America, it's 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 easier to really vet a company and check their financials and really find out if they're legit or not. So you being okay. in Africa and dealing with companies in India, how are you able to ensure that this company is legit or who they say they are? So uh, right now, another reason why I started working is for me to raise uh, the finances so that once I get a company that I'm ready to work with, I can visit them personally in their country of origin. Okay. Um, yeah, that would be the safest safest way. Mm -hmm. Of course, uh, like in Kenya, you have a platform called the eCitizen, a portal called the eCitizen portal. You you can basically check out any business, any vehicle, anything. So in Kenya, it's pretty much easy to know a legitimate company. And uh, okay. So are you, so by you putting in the resources and the time and uh, investing and traveling to go see these countries, that's a lot of upfront investment. It, just you going to do that. Um, is there a certain amount of revenue or a certain spin that the company that you deal with have to have in order for you to uh, contact them? or offer your services to them? Yeah, so basically what I have first to prove is to prove that I can get the market. Right. And it is worth the time. So one thing uh, we put in the contract is that uh, my company will be allowed to put a mock-up. Okay. For the price. Okay. And that is well on my, my revenue. Whatever mock-up I'll put, on the client, of course, it is a reasonable markup. Uh, that is my revenue. 
Okay. Okay, so let me ask you, doing business in India for an African. Now, what I've noticed is that when Indians, Chinese, foreigners come to Africa, we mm-hmm. roll out the red carpet for them. Mm-hmm. We sometimes treat them better than we do Africans. But when we go over there to do business, where we're hit with many roadblocks. Mm-hmm. Yes, yeah, true. Racism. What, what are your thoughts on that? And then what, is the, what are African governments doing? What are Kenyan governments doing to ensure that when their Kenyans leave Kenya to go to China or India, that they're not discriminated against or persecuted? You know? Okay. Uh, I've been to India. I've been to India a couple of times. Mm-hmm. Uh, discrimination, uh, not necessarily faced it. I've not lived there for a significant amount of time to, to say that I've faced discrimination. But the cases of discrimination, yes. And what I've heard from people living in India is usually that they work in groups. The Africans in India, they work in groups. You can't work alone. Okay. Yeah, so this is a sure way of uh, protecting yourself. Uh, God was gracious enough to, to give Africans mass, so uh, we are quite big, bigger than other populations of the world. Right. So, yeah. I don't think you'd want to mess with a bunch of 20 young men from Africa. No, I don't think there's anybody who who'll want that. Well, I think what, what they do, and it's kind of what white supremacists do, they go after the weakest, and if yeah. you're by yourself. But when they yeah. see you with packs, they won't, they won't touch they you. They won't do it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which is, which is cowardly. Um, yeah, yeah. For those who are interested in gaining citizenship in, um, in Kenya, how's that process, if you know? Uh, depending on you're coming from which country, uh, I mean, we'll see anyway, America or, or the UK. Okay, for an American or somebody from the UK, is quite easy. You can apply for uh, dual citizenship. Mm-hmm. That process you can take, you know. I, I think it is about uh, seven years. I don't know. I, I'm, oh, so- uh, I'm not. I'm not in the best position to to tell you about immigration laws. Okay. Yeah, I I'm I'm totally green on uh, on immigration. Okay. Yeah. But um uh, yeah, I'm 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 going to get with you offline and we're going to talk about the uh your your business and how I could uh help, you know, how how I how can I support that and you know, we'll we'll discuss some of the ideas offline. But for so, so. people who are watching and people who are going to see this in the future, what is your contact information? So if someone has a product or service that they think will do well in Kenya, mm-hmm. they can reach out to you and you can help them place that product. Well, give, give them your contact information. Okay. Uh, I can give out my email. Go ahead. I, I use uh, Yahoo email, which is uh, kkimani8 at yahoo.com can, can, you, can you spell that out for him the commodities k-i-m-a-i-n-a k-i-m-a-n-i correct yes but but you put k k two k's like kk okay. k money okay and then also too i'll make sure i put it uh in the uh, description of this video to your contact information yeah. um, you can put it on my gmail uh oh i got your gmail um, i got your gmail too okay cool so yeah, I'd like that. I'd appreciate that. Oh no, no, no problem. I mean, people who come on and who are willing to spend, you know, an hour just discussing uh, business opportunities uh, in their in their country and discussing, you know, kind of like the politics or what the diaspora can expect if they were to relocate to that country. Of course, I, I mean, I'm going to give you an opportunity to shout out your platform and make sure people reach out to you. If you're offering a product or service, yeah, that's just that's just natural. Yeah, of course. Yeah, yeah. 
So, um, yeah, uh, Amir, um, like I told you before, I'm, I'm quite uh, proud of you, what you're doing, and uh, I like the way you, you, you do your, your tours in Africa mm -hmm. using like the real people. Uh, you don't use these tour companies and whatnot. I like that. I like that, uh, that style of promoting Africa. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate it. My thing is I want, you know, we, we have this issue now with outsiders dictating and also telling the story of Africa. Yeah, um, that's true. That's quite a problem. That's my problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, my thing is I want Africans to tell their own story. That's why I come to you guys directly so we can get the truth and document it and put it out there. So that's that. That's yeah. the problem. Yeah, you know, you know, recently I just got yeah, well into an online argument with with uh, some guys uh, who uh, I don't know if you know this station Al Jazeera. Yeah, yeah, it's out of uh, it's actually Al Jazeera is owned by an Israeli. Yeah, it started out as a Qatar, at Qatar a company from Qatar, and then it was bought out by Israelis. Yeah, yeah, and he, he lives in Los Angeles. He lives in California. Yeah. So when, when Al Jazeera first started, uh, they came with this thing of uh, the voice of the voiceless. So oh. people thought, uh, thought Al Jazeera would give a good report about Africa. Uh -huh. But so far, Al Jazeera has just been like every other Western uh, media outfit. Uh, basically, what they report is about war, about corruption, about just vices, basically. And even yeah. when they do a story of, of, uh, of hope or something good, it is usually in, in poverty-stricken areas. They won't show, like, Westlands, Nairobi, how right. uh, Kenyans, uh, uh, middle class is booming, or they won't show something like that, no. Right. Yeah. Not yet, not yet. Yeah, I mean, like I said, it's just what Africans have to understand, man, and, and really this is the diaspora. As a collective, we have no friends. So, you know, these media outlets, you know, their interest isn't going to be in the best. Their interest isn't going to be, let me say, they're not going to have the best interest of Africans as a collective. They're just into sensationalism. So yeah. that's, what, that's what sells. And then, of course, people, they want those type of images, negative images, to be put on camera so they could justify not coming to Africa, I guess, not doing business with Africa, and then also justify, you know, I guess, black people as a whole being inferior. So that, yeah. that's why they do that. So that's why we need brothers like you, brothers like me, to put out content from the continent of what's really going on, allowing Africans to speak, you know, showing, you know, how there's a thriving middle class and upper class uh, community in Africa, how everybody's not poor and, and has a bowl yeah. has AIDS and all this other bullshit. So that's yeah. why I do what I do, because, I mean, it's going to be up to us, because all the other foreigners, they could care less about Africa. They really yeah, yeah. Less. yeah, yeah. So... So yeah, I agree, hundred percent. Absolutely. So, Kevin, anything else you want to share in closing? Um, yeah, uh, I'd say uh, people in America, especially Black Americans and uh, people from well-to-do uh, Black Caribbean countries, uh, Brazil, uh, UK, you know, they should reach out to the motherland. I mean. If there's anything uh, people have in those sides, it is opportunity, which Africans uh, sometimes don't have. Mm -hmm. Like, um, you know, nuclear science, you know, these um, subjects which in our universities uh, don't teach. Right. But you see, you have the opportunity to do that. So I think the best people to invest back in Africa would be uh people from african descendants mm -hmm. so
So it shouldn't be the Chinese coming to do these things, uh, you know, Indians uh, coming to do these things. It should be people who take the lead should be people of African descent. Yes. Because uh, once we have uh, an equal playing field, you, you know, in Kenya, there was apartheid. So uh, the British classed people according to, to uh, race. Right. And to some extent, uh, up to now in Kenya, race is still an issue. So uh, for a black man to come here and, and do business, you'd be in the majority. You won't be in the minority. Mm. So that is one thing you should put in uh, consideration, that you will be part of the populace. You won't be seen as an outsider. Mm. Maybe your accent, yeah, people will notice your accent, but you'll be seen as a black man first yeah. before anything. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. And hey, what do you feel then, then walking in, in, in a mall in, in Africa, the same mall that you can experience in, in Atlanta, mm -hmm. and, and seeing black faces all over? There's nothing better than that. Uh, nobody. Yeah checking you out for shopping while black or anything like that. I mean. I, I agree. Yes, brother. Thank, thank you for those words. So uh, we're going to we're going to go ahead and close it out. I got to uh, get my son to uh, soccer. He plays soccer. So, oh, OK. Hey, I got to get him ready and, and, and get him to his uh, his soccer. They really don't play games. It's kind of just he's three. So they kind of just kick the ball and okay. do little okay. drills and stuff. Well, right. Why soccer? I thought uh, soccer for you Americans is, is... Dude, it's, Kevin, you don't understand. Soccer is, is you know, it's funny. Um, back when I was in college, this was probably back in like 2003, 2004, uh, a friend, my friend, one of my teammates, I played football, American football. His, um, his, um, his father said soccer is going to be big one day in America. I said, no way. Kevin, soccer is getting big out here, real big. Okay. Yeah, yeah, real big. I mean, I would say this. Once they could, could go into the inner city and convince black kids to give up basketball and American football and start playing um, soccer, soccer. Yeah. Um, America will win a World Cup because I mean we got the talent. It's just we rather play football and and, and basketball. But yeah. America, America can win a, a World Cup in the next, I would say, ten like fifteen years. I mean it's it's possible, but again they just got to convince the kids in the inner city where all the talent is at. Don't play football, don't play basketball, kick a soccer ball, and once that happens, we'll win a World Cup. So, yeah, it happened in in Kenya with with the uh, rugby. Okay. Rugby all of a sudden has become an extremely popular sport in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And it started about 15 years ago. They went to high schools and primary schools and introduced the game and appreciation for the game. And right now, Kenya has won a Sevens uh, Cup. Wow. So rugby has become quite big, big in Kenya. Wow. Wow. Yeah, so all right, Kevin, we're gonna get out of here, man. Now, I appreciate it, and I'm I'm gonna hit you up later on today so we can discuss uh, your business and then uh, just chop it up, man. But I, I really appreciate it, Kevin. So, so no problem, bro. All right, brother, enjoy your day. Go eat some choma for me. Oh, we got it. We have a choma. We got a choma spot here in uh, Atlanta. Not out here in Atlanta. Really? With the kachamari and everything? They got all that kachamari, the choma, all that. Okay. Okay. Yeah. I might go get some today. But hey, man, I appreciate it. Thank you so much, Kevin. Thank you, thank you, thank you. All right, talk to you later.